before I tell a story, I just want to say it's pretty funny. Uh, either two years ago or last year, October had Friday the 13th, and everyone else was like, you know, oh my god, this is creepy, you know, or this is really cool. Me, even though I was a horror movie fan, you know, I never, like, looked at Friday the 13th being a bad or a creepy day like others did. I always looked at it like, whatever day it was. Honestly, it was just a regular day to me. But I could understand why people think that that day comes with such bad luck. Well, luckily, October the 13th this year is going to be on a Sunday, not Friday. So I guess those that worry about that don't have to this year. So I want to share, and by the way, before I share the story, one more thing, second thing. Uh, I can't use uh, scary music anymore. It it got copyrighted, and it's crazy because I've been using that music for the past four years or five years now. So I really didn't expect that. But I guess someone probably either bought the rights or made a false claim to get copyright. But yeah, so I'll eventually find it, another creepy music to go with these scary stories. But till now. You're just going to have to go listen to it without the music. My bad about that. I'll for sure fix that later. I'll find something for you all. Like I always do. So, tonight's story. On October the 5th, Friday. <laughs> that is pretty weird. It's Friday is the 5th day of the week. Right now it's October 5th. On a Friday. Has nothing to do with the story though. Okay, so. The story I'm going to tell you all is one of my favorite creepypasta stories. I know you creepy pasta fans out there would probably be very interested in this, you know, just even to know which story I like the most. And the story I like the most in the creepy pasta series uh, is so since it was one of the like I think like the fifth or probably no twenty fifth story I listened to of the creepy from the creepy pasta stories, I can't find it and I forgot its name, but I do remember the story just not the title. So I'm about to tell you this story. I'll call it a new title. We'll call it The Lucid Dreamer That Couldn't. Alright? Now it's gonna make sense when you hear the story. So, there was this, uh, let's say, 14 year old boy, and, oh wait, that's when I learned Lucid Dreamer. And it, creepy and um and he learned how to lose a dream obviously I'm saying and he got so good at it and he loved to do it every night while he was now he didn't fully learn how to do it because when you have to practice a lucid dream it takes three months for most people for some people it might take a month at top at mo at least my bad um the lucid dreamer that couldn't. All right. Now it's gonna make sense when you hear the story. So there was this, uh, let's say, 14-year-old boy, and oh wait, that's when I learned lucid dreaming, and it, it's creepy, and um, and he learned how to lucid dream. Obviously, I'm saying. And he got so good at it, and he loved to do it every night while he was now. He didn't fully learn how to do it, because when you have to practice a lucid dream, it takes three months for most people. For some people, it might take a month at top, at, mo at least, my bad. Um, you basically have to, there's a part where at first you wake up, like for the first month, or two weeks maybe you'll wake up and write down your dreams in a journal everything you can remember from that dream then in the next month you will uh, you go to sleep just for an hour and start trying to train it you know push yourself to try to control your dreams and as you do this like say you set your alarm all right an hour you do that for three days you know just wake yourself up after an hour, write down your dream, what you had, and 
and also what helps is reading the back the dream before or the last dream you had before and trying to continue that dream because it's like if you're able to continue it that means you're lucid dreaming it's getting a lot more powerful because if you're able the like the only way for it to be coincidence or random that go continue with the last dream is a pretty rare chance let's be honest Anyways, and then you, next week after, or ne after that three days, uh, the next three days, you go to sleep for four hours, set the alarm, wake up, do the same process. Uh, then the next, the next three days, on the ninth day, basically, you'd be regular sleeping like six to seven hours. And at this point, you should have the lucid dreaming uh, down because at that point, it's been two months. Uh, or at least halfway through. So, and then if you don't have it down then, you just repeat the steps. Well, this boy, he was on the last steps, see? He was going, uh, he was saying his alarm clock for five to six hours, went to sleep, he was right, you know, he knows what to do, he's been doing this for two months now. And it starts off, he's in a desert, and in this desert, there's nothing. It's just nothing. Now he tries to practice his lucid dreaming by summoning, like trying to, you know, put some buildings or structures in this desert, but he just can't do it. So he decides to go to the next step, which is practicing your movement. And this does work, see. He's, uh, he's able to run as fast as he can, jump as far as he can, and he starts to, you know, jump and run to try to go as far as he can to see if he could find some civilization in his dream, keep in mind. And as he's doing this, there's an ant hill. Oh, it's just an ant hill. Now this is actually a pretty big ant hill. Probably half the size of a chair. And he's, he's a good kid, so, or good boy, so like, of course he ain't gonna stop through the ant hill. He could, but instead he chooses to jump over the ant hill. Now as he's doing this, he realizes there's like thousands of red ants, and as soon as he jumps over it, they just come out the out that ant hill, and then they all just start charging at him. Now he's no longer jumping, and he's just running as fast as he can. But these ants, they just keep catching up to him, like slowly. Eventually, they keep catching up to him, and then um, he starts to feel some like crawl, actually like catch him, and they crawl on his shoe, they crawl on his leg. They start biting him all over, and he's feeling the pain too. Now, he has the power to wake himself up, but he's thinking, you know, wow, my lucid dreaming is so strong, I can actually feel pain in my dream. So this should mean a good sign, you know? And so what he did is he just, he just started jumping again, running, trying to get away from the ants. Well, he realized that those ants were now uh, surrounding him, you know? They're trying to close in on him from everywhere. Now there's millions of red ants, and he realizes he can't wake himself up because he's too stressful. See, it's easy to wake yourself up from a boring dream, but it's not so easy to wake yourself up from a, a intense dream. I know this by personal experience. I'm a lucid dreamer too. Eventually his legs get covered in the red ants, and they're biting everywhere. He feels like everywhere he's covered with these ants, and that's they slowly you know, keep on crawling on. It's as if they didn't even catch him though, but they just started multiplying on his body and started to cover him. That's what I'm thinking of. And once his half, like once his stomach starts getting covered with the red ants, he drops to the floor. He can no longer run. The pain's just too much. And all he's doing is, God, please wake me up. Please wake me I can't take this anymore. I promise never to lucid dream again. Of course, there, Think about, it. I don't think there is no, I don't know how lucid dreaming in the eyes of the religion is, but I think he was just like, you know, in desperate, willing to, a, I'll do whatever, whatever, anything, you know, promising anything basically to be saved. And, you know, eventually the ants just keep getting, in fact, the ants close in on him now. As soon as he fell, ants just psh, rush him. He's covered in ants now, just a layer of red ants, all crawling over and buying and buying. Now, he finally wakes up. He wakes up only for a second though, because his room's on fire. He was burning to death. See, 
while he was running from those red ants in his dream, feeling, you know, them bite the legs, actually what was happening in real time, uh, real life, his bed caught on fire because his house was already on fire. And by the time his bed caught on fire, most of the house was already on fire. So even if he woke up then, you know, he'd have to either jump through the flames to get out or, you know, run through the flames. So, you know, it'd be a hard situation. But yeah, by the time he did wake up, his covers that were on top of him, all on flames. Around him, flames. He couldn't even see his room. It was just all flames. And then, nothing. Until, and then he heard crackling of the fire from the house collapsing on top of him. That's, that's the story of the lucid dreamer that couldn't. I know, I told you a very intense story. Now that's one of my favorite, that's, like, that's an actual story that was written back in, oh shoot, stupid big bug, it's, I thought it was freaking bad. Um, back in 2013, 2012, probably even 2000, no, not 2000, that's way back. Uh, 2014 to 2015, that's when the story was written. If you know this, the story name, please comment below because I'd love to listen to that story again. I can't because I can't find it. There's been 100,000 creepypastas made since then. And yeah, I don't know the title of it, so it's especially hard to find. But I hope you all enjoyed that spooky story for your spooky, uh, Spooktober, as Cartoon Network is calling it, Scooptober. But yeah, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoy the chills. Stay awesome.